Rightio guys, here we are in Hal's garage. There's Boris on the uh, the bike stand there, ready to go. And here's Hal, say g'day. How you doing? Yeah. Hey guys. So, yeah, today's uh, mission will be to do, at least do the chain and sprockets. So I'll just go around here. So I'll be working on this side there. So we've just got a couple of straps holding it at the front there. And we've got a little scissor stand underneath to get the, uh, yeah, the back wheel off. I'll show you that. Alrighty, let's get into it. Okay guys, we're just taking off the front uh, sprocket cover. It's a B&B &B cover there. Or K what do they call it? Front, uh, is it uh, case a, saver? Yeah, case saver. Or, no, that's a sprocket slash cover. Yeah, cover. Slash case saver. Yeah. Alrighty. There's three, three just screws hold that on. Alright, hang on. Thanks mate. Sorry. Clean up while it's off. Yep. But there's still a bit, a fair bit of meat on those sprockets. Like I was to say, they've done eleven thousand. Yeah, they're not too bad at all. So they're pre pretty good. It was just the rear one. It's getting a bit sharp. The rear one was starting to show wear. Anyway, it's getting changed. Uh, we loosen these three. Uh, six mil, ten mil head uh, bolts off the sprocket. Yep. While the chain and uh, the wheels on. Yep. Because um, they can be pretty tight. You just give them a bit of a knot. There you go. Brilliant. You had this off before, but it's got a bit of um. No, nah. no. Nah? This is the first time this has been off. Okay. And it's got the um, the blue Loctite on it. Right. Then what we do is we spin this around one notch, so it comes in line. Oh yeah, with the the, the spline on the uh, output oh, yeah. shaft. Yep. You've got a no ring there. That's a, a silencer. That sits in here, right? Like that. Yep. And that's the original uh, retainer. Right, yeah, guys. I've just taken the chain uh, guard off here just to give you a better look at the chain, and yeah, just how I was making note that I've uh, of taking the uh, B and B uh, frame guard off here as well. Um, left that off to make it easier to get to the front sprocket, and I've just run gaffer tape on the inside as well, just to protect the frame. And then the uh, cover will go back on later. But anyway, we're gearing up to um, cut the chain because this is an endless chain. There's no joining link in the stock chain. So Al's got his uh, angle grinder here. We're about to uh, cut the chain. All right. So we're just loosening off the uh, rear axle. Looks pretty worn. Yep. Oh, I think it's done pretty well. 11,000 K stock oh, chain. I'm pretty happy with that. That's great. Yeah. Yep. And just note, guys, um, these snail cams, this is uh, the way they go. Sit them up that way. I did have it around the wrong way the um, previous time, but just just a little tip there. That's the way they go. So the uh, nut on the right-hand side of the bike. Give you a look at that, guys. So, you yeah, just ground it down there. There we go, guys. So, we've just moved the chain around there, and you're just using the chain breaker now to push uh, the pins through. Very, so easy, one... very easy, like grinding them. Yep. No effort at all. This is the way I've done it for 
20 years and this chain broke is just as old as me nearly. Yeah. So it just grips, grabs one side of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. G3. Okay. And you see the O rings. Yeah. Yep. Hang on. Okay. There you go, guys. So, yeah, guys, I've just put this back in, but you can see how easily that just slides out. So once that uh, the chain breaker down, where is it? Down here, does its job. Bring it back up here. Very, very easy to come out, and you can see the O-ring O ring on that one there. There's the O-rings. Right, guys, sorry about that. We've just pulled out the uh, the rear axle. And Hal's just bringing out the rear wheel. Spacer out. So oh, yep. Out. Yep. Move the caliper out of the way. Yep. And there's the rear wheel out. So just show the guys the little bit of play that you get, that I've got in that uh, rear cushion. Yeah. So what happens? These rubbers yep. tend to get compressed and hard. Yep. So they don't return. So how when when you usually we to put this in, you yep. have to virtually oh, bang yep. it in. Yeah, right. And you've got to make sure you get it in all the way where you've got this interference. These two little uh, that uh, lip here and that lip there on the hub. Yep. Oh, uh, yep. Just, but yeah, this is very loose. Yeah. Hey guys, we've got the sprocket in the vise. Now it's just loosening off the bolts there. You can see on the sprocket there it's 42 teeth. Hang on, I'll just get out of the way. Down in there. 52542. Are they 12 mil nuts underneath? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. 8mm um, bolts. bolts. Yeah. Oh yeah, yep, yep. So 12 mil uh, yep. nut. Into yep. self-locking nut. Yep. Oh, cool. Okay, guys, just taking off the last of the bolts. What have we got? Six of them. There's one worn out 42 to sprocket. Yep. So it's not too bad, but yeah, when you, like I say, so there's, there's the numbers there, there's the bolts there, and a little washer on them as well. And what have we got here, Hal? This is the, uh, the new uh, sprocket from Micone Motorcycles. Micone Motorcycles, that's where I bought the, the, um, the DR, yep. Okay. Yep. So, um, as you can see, there's a bit of a cutaway. This just centralises it, so make sure you put the uh, sprocket on the same way. You can't get it on the other way. Anyway, oh, yeah, because of the... the... Self, um, their uh, countersunk. Yep. And that's a 40. Let's have a look at the numbers that's on that. That's a 43. Yep. What brand is that? Or uh, is it... Sun. Oh, yeah. okay. Alrighty, so let's have a look at the teeth. Let's have a bit of a compare -o. Between the new and the old, you can see the difference. Hang on, we'll get the camera on that. It's just the sort of the wear that's happened. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's a fair bit. So, yeah, guys, there's the old one, the 42 teeth. And this, the new one's got a 43 teeth. And there's the package that the rear sprocket come in. Price on that $39. So there's the, the front sprocket 15. Was it 15 teeth? Is it correct? Is that st a standard? Is it? Yep, yeah, yep. Okay. Brake cleaner. Oh, yep. So I was just putting a little bit of brake cleaner on here. It's just saying that this surface here has to be uh, nice and clean just so the sprocket sits uh, nice and flush and flat. Okay. Oh, I can like one. New sprocket going on. And we're just going to put a little bit of um, Loctite on each of the bolts. They do have a, 
Sorry. Well, yeah, you're probably not required because they are locking nuts. Yeah, they do come with locking uh, nuts, but yeah. um, just to be sure, to be sure. Yeah. Yep. Won't mm. hurt things. No. Nope. All right. Washers and the nut. Yeah. Little black washers. Little black washers underneath. You can see that there. Rightio guys, I won't bore you with the rest of them, but uh, yeah, I'll bring you back when it's done. Okay guys, just looking at the uh, manual here. Servicing information 7-26. Down here it says the rear sprocket mounting nut, 27 newton metres, or uh, 2.7 kilogram metres, or 19.5 foot pound. That's what it's saying there. So, just bring you over to Hal. Hal's just setting his uh, torque wrench now. Okay, so Hal's just torquing these up now. Got a, it's got a spanner on the bottom of that. Okay, guys, we're just putting the uh, rear cushion. What are they? Cushion dampeners. Cushion dampeners back in. Sprocket. Which uh, the sprocket hub uh, connects to. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and Hal was saying that these are, are worn out. Oh, it goes the other way, Hal. Yeah. Just testing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and these, they can't go in it. They can only go in one way, so you can't mess it up. <clears throat> you can try. You can try. <laughs> but it doesn't but, work. But it doesn't work, yep. So there's the rear sprocket going in. And Hal will just show you the amount of movement that I've got with those rubbers and he seems to think that that's very excessive especially <coughs> for the trip you're going to be doing it for yeah the, um, so yeah so we're going to get some i'll put some new rubbers in that won't probably won't be on this video it may or may not be but yeah that's just a, an indication there that how reckons that's a bit too much well usually slot. when you put your sprocket <coughs> into these if the rubbers are new or not worn yep Basically, you have to leather it in like this. Yeah, it's because tight, yeah, it's tight, tight fit. And you've got to go like this to get it in. Get it in, yeah, but mine's just a very loose fit. Yep, which, you know, um, gives uh, a surging and a, a, a chain whipping. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, and the amount of Ks you're going to do, Yep. Uh, especially in sand. Yep. Um, yeah. You just don't want anything to go uh, go wrong. Yeah. So. All right, yeah. guys. Just about to take the old uh, front sprocket off. And there you can see. So that little raised bit there goes on the inside. And you can see the spline that it goes on there. And what what's this uh, bit here, Hal? Um, uh, that's, that was the. Uh, it's a seal retainer. The, yeah, the seal uh, retainer, that's right. Yeah. DR650s, when they first came out, they had a, a tendency to pop the main seal out. Yep. Um, so earlier model uh, DRs, up until probably around about 2012, Suzuki now put this on at yeah. X Factory. Yes. But the early models, they don't. Yep. And, um, yeah, cool. great investment. Go for it. Yep, so Mal's just putting on the new sprocket. So again, it's a 15 tooth, same as standard. And you can see the flat side out. Rightio guys, so Hal's just getting the uh, three little bolts for the front sprocket ready. And he's just using the uh, 243 Loctite, the blue Loctite. Um, and he was just making note that the rear sprockets just had the, the, the pink sort of Loctite on it, not the... Not the, like the Heavy duty Loctite. Not the yeah, super, no. super Loctite. Yeah, so he's just preparing those. Um, and there's the retainer. The retainer, and is that the that's the O ring, isn't it? That's the O ring goes around there, the rubber so ring. Give me a close that's up. another oh, like yeah. a dampener. Yeah, okay, yep. Mm. Righty -o. so that's going on. I'm not going to wait. Right, you're all right, and we just line that up with the bolts. So you've rotated that? Yep, rotated that around. So That's that retainer slides onto the uh, spline and then and then uh, you just rotate it about half a turn and then it sort of helps lock, lock it in as well. Yeah, locks it in. Yep. 
I'm going to screw those in and I suppose they've got a torque setting as well. Do they? Mm, possibly do. All right, we'll come back to you guys. Hal's got the gearbox in first gear and we're just going to tighten that. Drop that. So the torque setting on this is 6 Newton metres. We just looked it up in the book. And pounds is uh, 4. So 4 or 4.5, four something like that. Yep, go for it. To me that's too tight. I wouldn't even go that far. Yep. That's a fair whack of leverage, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Too much. Yep. Okay. So yep. that's going to go nowhere. It's got Loctite on it. Yep. Super Loctite. So uh, all nice off. and neat. Cool. Had to put the rear wheel in, and Hal's just saying it's a good idea to open up the brake a little bit. He's just using a screwdriver there. Yeah. This makes your job a bit easier. Yeah. Radio yeah. guys, Hal's about to put the rear wheel in. See how we go. Can be a bit hit and miss spaces and things like that just come around the other side where the brake is Making sorry sure guys caliper lined up yep you can see yeah well, i've made it easier for myself you can see the, yeah the amount of room i've got there yep all right so that's so, a slid in there no worries probably needs to is one of two ways we can do that we can just sit that wheel yep on there and we can lower Boris. Oh yeah. Till it lines up. Yep. All right. Okay, so the axles in, the cams, we're just the snail getting, cams in. I'm just sitting this in here at the moment because we've got to get the chain in there. Yep. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to cut appropriately the right amount of lengths. It's just oh, yeah. okay. Right, so we're just going to sit initially set it on zero. You can see that there. We'll go from there. Rightio, guys. So this is the chain that I've ended up with. EK chain. Looks pretty snazzy on the box. What else can we show? Turn it over. What's it say? 124 links. There's the part number. The info on the back as well. Okay, guys. Hal just pointed out that the rivet, oh, the, the link that comes with the chain is a rivet link, and then that's why we've got these two spares here with the uh, the circ clip in them. So we'll pop one of those in, and I'll just have this other one as a spare. And have a look at the chain, guys. Look at this. That bad boy. Looks pretty good. It got written on there. Can we get that? Okay, guys. So Hal's just feeding on the new chain now. So it's a 525 chain. And again, the standard gearing was 15 on the front and 42 on the back. And I'm now running 1543. So 525X ring chain. A X O ring or what, yeah, what do you yeah, call it? X, X ring. X, X ring, ring yep. is O ring. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay, guys. So that's where it goes. Hell's put a little X on there. Which one do um, cut and remove? He's going to go and ahead and do that now. Okay guys, we're just breaking the chain now. There we go. Happy days. Okay, just get the um, circlip 
joining link. Yep. These little o rings, you can see there. Got a step seal. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. So since it's a circular o ring, it's. Um, yeah. So that's to uh, trap uh, grease into it. A little packet of grease with the uh, joining link. And just so we're just greasing up the uh, the O rings or the X rings. Yep. That and just feel it when the side plate goes on. It'll push in. Oh yeah. Okay. Does that yeah. go in a certain way? Does it have to have yep. the writing out, I suppose? Or yeah, whatever? I always put the writing out so yep. it's consistent. Yep. Is it in the same direction? No. Let's have a look. Sure is. All right, now we're going to probably have to clamp these on. We come around this side. Oh, you can't hang up. See, the clamp is just above, just gripping the bottom oh, tip yeah, yep. of the peanut uh, side yep. plate. Yep. Um, so what we're doing is going to be pushing these and making these clamp down evenly. Yep. Um, side by side. Righty All right. Let's get in. I'm going to come to the back. You can do it that side. Yeah, you can see it's protruding through now. You can see where the clip's going to go on. That top one. Yep, that's in, in yep. enough. Over the marine. Stand its home. Yep. I've just got the circlip in there, and that's the way it goes. Like Hal was just saying, the round end goes to the, the towards the drive. Forward. Suppose, forward, yeah. Motion. Forward motion, so it doesn't flick off. Or potentially get flicked off. So, yeah, the wheel's going to rotate that way. So that's, that's the way we put it. Grip of that. Yep. So go with that. There you go. Is that? She's on. Beautiful. What I like about that is what I like about this is um, the chain being gold. Yep. Um, you know where you're joining, joining it yeah. straight away. Yeah. And, um, yep. Um, there being a, a black uh, clip. Yes. Yep, so, uh, very easy to check. Yep. Cool, that's on. Now we just need to adjust the, the slack out of it now, don't we? Exactly. Yep. All right. Brilliant. So, okay, so guys, so we've just got it um, on one notch before the one. And this is where the, how much chain slack we've got at the moment. When we had it on one, it was way too tight, but we're just going to run with that at this stage. So, yeah, you can sort of see, and there's... Only a little bit of weight on the wheel at the moment.